Yeah, direct misfire, aiming up hits Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix Follow along, stay up to date Comment, like, subscribe today And welcome once again to another Direct Misfire Missive. Joining me today, as always, is Selick. Hey, guys. And Hugh. Howdy. As we discuss all things hobby in this time of Rona. So pull up a seat, grab a drink, and let's get into it. All right, fellas, how are we going? Feeling isolated? Yeah, doing a little bit of that. So working from home, uh, you tend to just sit for long periods of time, but doing okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, mostly relaxing as well. Trying to um, play shitloads of video games, basically. is Because uh, you've just come back from overseas, so you've... Yeah, so I've had about 10 days of, at the, at the time of recording, of isolation so far, where I'm not allowed out at all, which isn't hugely different to everyone else. The main difference for me is that I can't go for a run, um, right. you know, or, or walk the dog, which is... So you're super yeah, isolated. troublesome. But yeah, you get over it. Worst things have mm. happened. I mean, a lot of people in the world much worse off than me, so I just... Um, yeah, I feel pretty lucky, really. I've still got a job and all that, I'm working from home. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, good yep. stuff. And I'm also working a, a bunch because um, I'm in IT, so I just have to re- work from home. But mm-hmm. I tell you, that first Monday when all the clinicians had to remote from home was uh, a test. <laughs> <laughs> Challenging times, mm-hmm. indeed. I could imagine. Yeah, that sounds so, tricky. Yeah, felt like quitting, quitting at the end of that day. <laughs> but yeah. we're getting through it <laughs> now similar thing obviously i work in telecommunications so um the amount of last minute urgent things that had to change to make sure that everyone can work from home at the same time um that you're working from home you can't be next to your staff i manage mm-hmm. quite a few staff so uh not been able to read their body language and stuff it's a bit bit tricky mm-hmm yeah, it really makes a difference, doesn't it? I mean, especially, it, I, I've got a similar vibe. I'm IT like Benson, but probably have a role more similar to Celex in that I um, it's all people role and I, I deal a lot with the humans of IT, if you will. So lots of phone calls, lots of talking to my developers and making sure that everything's going all right with them and, you know, they're not necessarily known to be the most social sorts in the world. Um, <laughs> so... For the most part, it's fine, but it can be a bit challenging when it's all online. Mm. And I'm your classic turn it off, turn it on again type of IT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when, so- when someone calls up and says, Ben, I can't remote in. All right, is your computer turned on? I don't know, which which one is that one? Uh, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit frustrating. <laughs> But I guess the, the one positive that we do have is that while we're home a lot, it does mean that we can potentially do a little bit more hobby than we normally would. Yes. Potentially. I don't think it's happened for me <laughs> as yet. It is potentially possible, all right. Mm. <laughs> I haven't really done much of it either. I'm looking forward to a new Ratkin, aka Skaven Blood Bowl team coming in the mail, which has been coming in the mail in a manner of speaking from uh, the Kickstarter I backed for about Two years? Did you get your postage notice? Yeah, supposedly it's been posted. This is some time ago. So, I mean, with with all that's going on in the world, uh, mm. I sort of have to wait and see, I guess. But fingers Big crossed it will actually turn up. Yeah, <laughs> I've jumped in on the um, counter charge painting challenge, but progress isn't as uh, fast as I'd like because of work. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish all th- three units that I uh, pledged. Mm, fair be, enough be happy with one and i've just been uh making some mdf buildings actually for uh Bantix the walking dead so i figured that if i'm in an isolation town um playing by myself is going to be something that i might have to do <laughs> so um yeah the solo um campaigns and things so i'll be sort of doing all those and taking some pictures and things like that mm-hmm. Ooh, right another thing that i've done uh, read through the Rumble Slam 2.0 rulebook. Uh, it looks quite fun. So I'll be <laughs> looking forward to meeting up again so we can finally play some of that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I could get down with some more Rumble Slam for sure. That's a fun little game. Good for probably anyone who likes fantasy games like uh, Kings of War and stuff. If you want to sort of have a break between the big ranks and flanks battles and play something a bit more silly and lighthearted, I'd recommend it. It's like a wrestling game uh, in the fantasy setting, isn't it? Mm. 
you could probably like um, imagine you know how vanguards the the forward units before the the actual proper battles rumble slam could be like kings of war after the fight <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got your orcs and your humans your halflings and whatnot how long does it take to knock out a game uh maybe an hour it's pretty quick yeah it is pretty quick um and it depends how many uh it's not called points but like gold you play or whatever it is but mm. uh yeah the standard game's pretty short we've only played a couple of times i'd love to play that again actually yeah it's we've never actually played a one-on-one it's always been a a multiplayer game with yeah. three or four people. I could get around some one-on-ones. I think it'd be fast to play too. Um, yeah, I've got some uh, surprise, surprise, some rat warriors, uh, rat <laughs> wrestlers to paint up. Uh, so that, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, they're still not painted, are they? No, nah, well, I don't really regret not painting them on account of the fact we haven't played for the whole time I've owned them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if we if we ch- <laughs> what we got to do is tee up a game and then just book it in. Obviously, when it's allowed, <laughs> and then yeah. And then uh, I'll actually do it. Hmm. I've also been um, raiding the bin of uh, toys from my nephews and <laughs> got some old Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars that I've destroyed uh, in anticipation to build them back up for Gaslands. Oh, yeah. Mm. So that's another project that I'll be working on slowly because no one's going to play that unless I bring all the stuff, so... Fair enough. That's my next goal as well. well. That sounds okay. That'll be that'll be fun to play. I hope so. <laughs> Trying to put all this time into it, realize hmm, maybe this game isn't for us. <laughs> so we usually catch up on Wednesday nights. Uh, obviously, with the quarantine and COVID nineteen happening at the moment, we can't catch up. So how how mm-hmm. I wasn't there last Wednesday. So how did that go? Well, we've been doing some Kings of War. We played a couple of games at UB. Um, mm-hmm. For some reason, Andrew's smashing all of us in UV. Uh, he's beaten myself and Benson several times. Uh, it seems the to UB be... dice are rubbish. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> For me, anyway. <laughs> Your UB dice seem to be especially rubbish. You're just rolling double ones like they're going out of fashion now. I guess now you yeah. know how spoon feels. But, but yeah, it's, it's quite frustrating. I can understand why you flip the table. I think UB is a, a great medium in general but it doesn't quite agree with me in the same way as playing on regular old tabletop does it just doesn't uh something doesn't mesh in my brain quite so much and i sort of miss things that i feel as though i wouldn't miss on the tabletop as easily or or maybe like when you roll bad dice you get saltier about it because it feels like the computer's ripping you off or something I, I, i'm not sure <laughs> it, it, and i realize it doesn't make much sense but it yeah it is bothersome nonetheless Yes, mm. so UB2, so universalbattle.com, uh, universalbattle2.com, sorry. Um, that's sort of mimicking the Kings of War experience at the moment. I think mm-hmm. there was like 700 games there uh, earlier this week ongoing at the same time, which is pretty crazy. Really? Mm. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, really... so obviously that's a mix between Ninth Age and Kings of War um, and a couple of little games as well. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's a pretty pretty good way of getting rolling some dice even if they are rubbish uh, while you can't do it um so i think it's like 1999 i think for three months us um so it's not a, not a bad way to do it the other way ben some you've actually been looking at tabletop simulator as well yeah at the uh, time of recording it's on sale half price or just about half price and it's basically a, a simple uh, well it's an open tool for people to create their own games and mod the thing it comes off comes with um, some basic games as standard like your backgammon and card games and checkers and that kind of thing but um, you can also pay um, uh, a few dollars for some professionally made games like scythe and blood rage and a couple of other well-known board games zombie side i should get around it if i bought it now would we be able to play after recording uh it'll take a little bit to set up just because i've only fiddled with it 15 minutes and mm-hmm. imported um, like the Kings of War board and terrain and counters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it takes a little bit of uh, setup to to work out how to play it properly. Yeah, it's not kind of super simple, but it doesn't look like it's overly complex either. But I think if you did buy it, we sh- we could be able to get a game going within maybe half an hour. Yeah, it's nothing. That's good. Too That's how long it takes to set up people. a board game once you factor in some banter yeah. and beer time. <laughs> but what I like about tabletop simulator is because it's 3d and you can kind of zoom in and spin the table around and you've got um height to your terrain and your figures and whatnot but and also the dice you can 
roll the dice and it actually rolls, not just spits out a number and tells you that you've just doubled ones again. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Would that, do you think that would make it less annoying when you did roll? Yeah, I, I kept one? rolling the dice. It's quite satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the time of recording, that was 14 Australian dollars uh, for yes. Tabletop Simulator as well. So that's pretty cheap. Yeah, that mm. sounds like something worth picking up. Even if you're not playing Kings of War and you're just rocking out some uh, board games and things. I know, like a lot of homies out there that are fans of the tabletop space, you would be yeah missing out on um playing just regular board games with the mates like we're used to playing every week um kings of war is only sometimes part of it but board games and things are very commonly part of the fun so uh mm -hmm. so yeah yeah been missing that under current circumstances and that's likely to be the case for a whole lot longer so mm -hmm. might be worth getting used to this kind of thing for a bit but 15 dollars australian is nothing for that kind of thing and i'm i'm, I'm in favor of even without necessarily playing that much of it, supporting these kinds of things. Um, I like it when someone's willing to, you know, uh, lash out and put the money towards developing something in the, um, you know, turn-based space, if you will. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And it's also just a one-off, once-off purchase, unlike UB where it's subscription-based. So you just... Yeah, I mean, I don't mind the subscription-based model either in the sense that, um, you know, those guys are putting a lot of time and effort into something that's not really <laughs> very lucrative, I'm sure. But, mm. um, but if, if you yeah. are budget conscious, yeah, mm. that could be a factor. Yeah, no, for sure. Though, either of those two options, I think, is a, a really good way of getting some games out. Uh, I think on Facebook, there's a couple of big tournaments that are happening at the moment. I think there's 70 or 80 people that are signed up for the, the new UB2 tournament. So that's, that's massive. Uh, I think it's quite a bit more than that now. Oh. I'll just see if I can get the details because I've signed up for it. Gee, I'd need to tighten up my game a lot to play in a tournament, I feel like. I'd feel a bit nervous to play tournament UB. I think there's a lot of new people playing that as well. Well, that makes sense, yeah. Hopefully people are lenient. I mean, they're Kings of War players. They've got to be pretty mm. chill. Um, that's generally the case. So okay, there's only 1.1 Gigadonks Tables Top Simulator. I've just bought it as we speak. So there you go. Huh. Well, there you go. Call to Arms Worldwide 4.0 Universal Battles event has 129 participants so far. Wow. 129? Yeah. Dang. And I'm the only Directness Fire guy. I'm looking pretty lonely. Yeah. Guy's going to jump on. <laughs> <laughs> Back me up. Is, it, we'll is the idea later. that you play over a period of time, like you get matched up with people, a bit like that game we were talking to? Yeah, and you um, get like a week or two or whatever it is to play your game. Okay, right. Okay, so it's a bit like a Blood Bowl League almost in that year. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to play all in one day. I don't know how you jump onto it. If you search um, Kings of War Universal Battle within Facebook, I'm sure you'll find it there. But also in tabletop.to and then search for Call to Arms Worldwide 4.0. Uh, you should be able to join the event that way as well if you are interested. Hmm. Sounds cool. Speaking of events, have you had any more thought about this idea of a a dual battle simulator kind of thing to find out the best Kings hero of Fight Club. in Kings of War? Kings of Fight Club, is that what you're calling it? <laughs> yeah. So we've, we're have changing the, the details here. Last time, at the last Mrs. Fire, we kind of went through four of the factions to pick who was going to be the champion for those armies to yeah, save quite, it's everyone. It's quite boring to listen to. Thanks for yeah. the feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've gone ahead and selected one from each. Um, you guys had a bit of input with that as well. Mm -hmm. And I've just uh, already made the matchups for the first round. So we can go through those to let everyone yeah, sure. know what's, who's, who's fighting who. Listeners will be relieved to know that the assassin is in fact representing the Ratkin uh, for this particular battle, which, of course, is appropriate. Of course he is. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So the first the first um, matchup, we have the Abyssal Champion, Kane, and he's facing off against Olaf the Barbarian, or the Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we have Madriga the Elf up against the Centaur Chief, Jojak Horseman, Ooh. Gobbo King. Fucking wrecked K. 
Kent. <laughs> <laughs> so you've actually na- you've named all the generic yeah. characters some F U double G I N. He okay. is facing Firebrand. And then we've got a shade, Shady McShay Shay versus the man splitter got a big axe. Uh we have Dwarf Lord Rock the Dwayne Johnson. He's facing off against Hugh's favourite, the Master Scorrier, Francois Sneak and Stab. Oh shit, Ooh. I hope Francois rolls well. <laughs> yeah, there's only <laughs> That's 10 a tough matchup for him to start off with, well. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. There's only CS1. Come on, Francois. Yeah. <laughs> the Abbess Sister Sledge is up against the uh, Centurion Roman Wet Wipe. That's from Trident Realms, I'm pretty sure. Uh, then we've got the Twilight Kin Assassin, I'm a Cut You, versus the Ghoulgast Gazar. Uh, we also have, for the last matchup, the Halfbreed Champion, Dissel Borfman, versus the Varangar Cursed Son, Dante Nomates. And uh, because it's uh, not even, we have Hero. The Hero has got a buy, so he's going yes. automatically going to round two. <laughs> no, that's an appropriate character to have a buy. <laughs> <laughs> he is so heroic after all. Yeah. Hang on, is, so, is someone going to get a buy every round? Because it's always going to be an odd number. Possibly. Well, we unless they wait. Oh, hero. wait, no. Because I mean, if, if there's it's a draw, draw then, then they both yeah. get knocked out, don't they? And that's yep. actually not that unlikely to happen, because they might both go in, injure one another, and then next round both break each other. It's not that unlikely, is it? Really? And I think yeah. the person or the the character that gets the buy next, if they get there is a buy, will be the one that's taken the most damage or only just barely won. So how are these battles actually going to take place? Like, how are we going to uh, are Within we going to play UB? it on UB? Yeah, yep. are we going to so do it after the podcast? The we can do that if you like. Yes, that sounds fun. Yeah, let's do it. So they shouldn't take very long to get through. It's just one hero against another, mm-hmm. and then um, I might have like a, a bonus cast where we go through uh, and explain what happened each in each of the rounds, and then do the next matchup. Cool, cool. Hey, speaking of which, um, we've had a few UB battles recently, as we've mentioned, and uh, I think a, a time or two we've chucked it out there on the Direct Misfire Facebook page to say that we're having a battle, and people mm-hmm. sort of have dropped in and out and stuff. Um, I acknowledge that UB is enormously boring to watch, really, and I think because you, you get in there and you know it, it just it just looks like a static playing field and every now and again you see something move or you see dice rolled and it's not necessarily obvious even what's going on uh, it's very different to watching a game of kings of war in real life because of course you can't hear the people that are playing um, mm. because anyone playing ub with half a brain is is on um you know uh, discord or what have you and talking through the game rather than just typing everything that's going on or something like that yeah um i wonder if any listeners out there have any suggestions about ways that we could make that a sort of more interesting spectator kind of situation. Well, there is a Kings of War 3.0 Australia Discord channel and there's a number of Universal Battle rooms. So maybe next time we go to advertise and play that, uh, say that we're playing on UB, we jump into one of those Universal Battle rooms so anyone else -hmm. else can jump in as well. Yep, I can post the link to that uh, Discord as well. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, especially if we've got a few listeners listening, then maybe it's, I suppose, I feel like you'd have to play in a slightly different way. Like you'd play in a way that was a little more interesting to watch rather than sort of pausing every five minutes to go and get a beer or or whinging about your double ones the whole time or whatever. Benson. Maybe, maybe that'd hold you to uh, <laughs> playing a little, yeah, Benson, come on. <laughs> <laughs> whinging about your flank getting charged by some race that you couldn't even see <laughs> <laughs> I mean I gotta say that last Wednesday when I was playing against Andrew and the game was over by the end of turn three yeah. the isolation was kicking in and I was feeling pretty down to begin with and then <laughs> you have a game like that and it just uh, oh mate there was something in the fell, air that fell night, into a he, hole. he proceeded to belt me immediately after belting you as well and just um, mm. the, I don't know I, I try to get enthusiastic about it, but I tell you, I struggle with low point games in not really just Kings of War, but rank and flank games in general. Those kinds of games, and in fact, virtually every tabletop game I can think of, I can't really think of an exception. Like, it's not very good in skirmish games like Malifaux either. It's not very good in like you know 
roll dice and eat pretzels games like 40k and that kind of thing either mm. it's just those low you, you need a certain critical mass of units on the table i feel like where one die roll doesn't just completely bugger the whole game i'm not necessarily talking about double ones even like if you get like a lucky flank or, or even it's not necessarily even a die roll just like one mistake or one significant event takes place in the game and because you've got so few units like the game's just mm. over from that point yeah. on you know if you've got one main unit that's um, got all your your hopes and dreams, mm. and yeah. it disappears, <laughs> then I feel like there's there's nothing left. Because uh, the Convict is a awesome f- uh, Kings of War event that takes place in June, in theory at least. I mean, who knows if it'll get delayed or it'll happen with everything that's going on in the world and all that, which is nobody's fault. But um, mm-hmm. that one in particular, you've got a couple of, we've talked about on the podcast a few times before, a couple of 1495 point games, and then it goes up to 1995, I believe, and then finally ends at 2250, is it? Or yep, 20, that's right. Yep. Or something? 2250. 2250. So I've uh, challenged Tracy to a grudge match in round one. Um, so for the first time... I haven't heard back from, a- from Andrew either. Maybe he hasn't been listening. What, as a grudge, you mean? Yeah. No, AG. Oh, AG, yeah, yeah good point. I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll take you up. He loves a good grudge, AG. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it should be, should be a fun game. So both Bensam and I are, like, trying more than we ever normally would to actually get a good list and actually play competent Kings of War. Like, normally it's... We try to a degree, of course, but we don't... You know, there's, there's a certain amount of it gets not, to a point not caring that much, you know? Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, you want to take your army that's cool and all that kind of thing as well. But like, I want to give Tracy a good game, and I'm sure you do as well with AG, and preferably win, of course. But at 1495, man, it's so dicey. Like, I played you, Benson, with my proposed 1495 list. So we played on a normal four by six foot table for that <laughs> game, and uh, I, I mean, I took you off mainly because you double wound your way out of that game and whatever else. But the, the army felt. That notwithstanding, the army felt competent. I took the same army against um, Andrew on Wednesday, and immediately after deployment, I'm like, "Man, this army sucks." Because we played on a smaller table, which is, mm. I think is probably the way they're going to do it. And I've gone for this really horde kind of ratkin list, and it's just it's just a potato on that table. I've got too many hordes; it's too narrow. Once you reduce it to four foot by four foot, I think. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I can't even, like, width-wise, on the uh, deploying across the deployment line, I can't fit the whole army. Like, there's two units or whatever that need to go behind another unit. And it's just clear. As soon as I deployed it, I'm like, right, this is not the army I should be taking on this table. There's no way to sort of get around them. There's no way to sort of use your numbers to a significant advantage. You're like, almost forced to take this kind of... In my view, anyway, on that on that size of table at that points limit, because fourteen ninety five, it's small, but it's not like ultra small. Yeah, it's, it's only it's three quarters of a normal army, right? So if you go for that haughty kind of attitude, and you're on a full table, you're going to be fine. In fact, that was my whole theory. Is I'm like, oh, other people would try to take a more elite punchy list. Maybe I can surround them, do a bit of, you know, get on both flanks and get aggressive. No, it does not work on that small table. Admittedly, I made mistakes in that game and Andrew played well and all the other things, but but I expect the same to happen, obviously, against Tracy. Like, he's going to play a good game, so I need to be taking a good list, and that is not the list for a small table game. Mm, That's what playtesting is all about. Yeah, and normally I don't (laughs) (laughs) playtest. But it's nice to have that opportunity a bit. And I guess UB and also Tabletop Simulator, perhaps, uh, provides that possibility of doing it uh you know any day of the week any night of the week it's much quicker to have a game than it is in real life at least i'll give it that yeah yeah for sure just uh for our listeners this podcast will be out much earlier but we actually did a little bit of recording yesterday hugh yes um the most anticipated episode of um direct misfire so far i think your most anticipated was it no no i'm talking to the listeners obviously all I re- my true love is, is the listeners, <laughs> and I know what the people want is to hear about the Ratkin Army review, mm. and uh, you can't just you can't really dispute that. I mean, come on, the numbers don't lie. No, the people did vote, and the people voted uh, very well actually for the Ratkins. So 
That one there is on the edit table um, and will be coming out shortly. Yeah, I think Benson's looking after that one this time. Yes. Um, it'll take a little bit of time to <laughs> edit this one because it's a long one and I like to jazz it up a bit as well. I mean, more people voted to hear the Ratkin Army review than actually play Ratkin in Australia. So I assume that <laughs> the, the reason for that in one or two people's case, it's because they play Ratkin. <laughs> Everyone else just wants to know how to beat me. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but voting doesn't always mean it's the right choice. I mean, look at Trump. Oh, True, true. Fair and <laughs> <laughs> reasonable perspective. Yeah, democracy is overrated. <laughs> Except when it comes to Ratkin. <laughs> right. Well, now we've covered off politics. Uh, terrific. <laughs> we'll just uh, tick off. Uh, last thing on my list is religion. Uh, and we're done. Um, All right, Vaseline. <laughs> what a bunch of jerks. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys seem like real stick in the muds. <laughs> All right, we've got anything else to talk about? No, I don't think we've got too much to talk about, um, but I do want to sort of finish up today's session with a, a big reach out, I guess, to all of our listeners, particularly those that are in isolation, similar to Hugh at the moment, that can't go out for that run or can't mm. pop down to the shops. Um feel free to just hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or ask us a stupid question or shoot us a picture and go, hey, what do you think about this? Um, If you've got some sort of painting advice, do what I do. Uh, Send Benson a message and go, hey, what would you do with this (laughs) colour? I think it's really, really healthy and it's a a really good thing to do. Um, Even if you can't come out and see somebody face to face, if you can reach out and just have that that casual conversation, I think it will help us all. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. We're always happy to chat to any listeners and reply to feedback or, or, you know, just say what's up and whatever else without without any doubt and talk about Kings of War or about anything else. Like, uh, yeah, we're your homies. Check us out. Because mm. I know, like, if I don't have any interaction, I start to get down pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, me too. Talking yeah. helps. I'm a people person. I, being, as much as, like, <laughs> being a nerd at this particular time is, like... <laughs> You suddenly justified, like, Claire's like, oh, you're sitting on the computer doing nothing and playing video games all day and, like, hanging out, you know, with your friends online and not not ever doing anything social. Now it's like, oh, yeah, it's a government mandate, baby. I've got to do it. (laughs) (laughs) You can't be mad. (laughs) So it's a good time to be a nerd in a way, like, if you're trying to take a positive spin on things. But Mm. um, nevertheless, isolation is not good for anyone. And, yeah, we should, uh, anyone in the Kings of War community, Go ahead and reach out. <laughs> Claire's, <Yes>, making, <laughs> Claire's making an angry face at me. <laughs> <laughs> She's just playing around. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Help out your fellow um, hobbyists. Help out your fellow <laughs> nerds. Be nice to one another and uh, share the love. All right. So, and with that, um, stay safe. Keep washing your hands. And we'll speak to you soon. See you guys. See you, Ratkin fans. Yeah, direct this fire blowing up the game. Talking many war games is our aim. Rule books to advice, we cover it all. With the best tactics, we never fall. Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix. Math hammer doesn't work, it's a trick. Follow along, stay up to date. Comment, like, subscribe today. Come check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Direct Misfire. If you want to shoot us an email, directmisfire at gmail.com.